Today, we are checking out the ReZero cut content for Season 3, Episode 2. This is the Annie News video, so you know we're going to get filled in on all the details that were left out of the anime. So if you enjoyed the video, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. You can find the full length as well as exclusives for my reactions over on Patreon. And uh, let's check this out. Rap introduces something entirely new to Subaru. The way her power constantly resonates back and forth leads to this infinitely growing sense of whatever emotion Sirius wants him to feel. It's this mental torture that's explored more deeply in the novels, along with the whole fight that we didn't get to see. Subaru had actually channeled mm. his inner Indiana Jones and faced off head-to-head -head with Sirius in a way that was somewhat impressive. Sure, Bro. it may have just ended up- And episode two was crazy. So much craziness happened with him dying anyway, but his whole approach towards it highlighted just how much he'd grown. So, as True. I go through that and all the other little- I don't think he would have approached these situations the same way just prior to the events of season two. Details, hopefully you enjoy seeing everything the anime left out from the novels. I'll be making these every week for every episode, so feel free to subscribe if you want to know everything there is to know about ReZero. Let's Not get a bad started. Idea. All right. Episode 52. Decisive end of Ice and Fire. Ice and Fire? Game of Thrones? Covering chapters 1 and 2 from volume 17 of the light novel. Damn, it's on volume 17. Oh, well, there goes, um, Lust. With Subaru having returned from death for the first time in a year, you'd be surprised to know the emotion he was feeling now was anger. It wasn't mm. so much this grim despair or uncertain confusion, but instead this endless resentment towards the fact that he had died. Yep. See, he's just mad. He's he's he has now reached a point of of no longer feeling that level of despair from like death and shit. He's just like fuck, man. I wanted to live. It was over yeah. He's mad. He lost a life. Yeah, yeah exactly. Over a year ago, that Subaru vowed never to plunge headfirst into death again. Yet only moments ago, he walked right into it. His resolve to challenge every hardship and ordeal with every ounce of strength he had was effectively rendered meaningless in the face of who he now knew as Rat. So, for him to fail the pledge he'd made back during the witch's trial and sanctuary, well, that overwhelmed him with both shame and anger. It was a brutal combination that would have resulted in I would say his first death, like his first death against Wrath, or as a result of Wrath, is not one of like a wasted life or pledging, plunging headfirst into... I would not argue, I, I would say he was just going about his life and then boom, this bitch shows up. She got powers that killed him. Like, what is he supposed to do in that situation? All he can do is learn about what's going on and, and try to use all of that into the next one. Like, he got caught off guard. Now, if he gets in that situation and then decides to go in again, that's different. Yeah, he got mated in one move. Next, if not for Subaru realizing how little time he had. Before all his save points were hours to days before the moment of his death, but this, this time, time it was only minutes. It was yeah. a brand new challenge that Subaru had never faced before. Mm. Now it was during all. Now this he's working with like couldn't even be bothered, and that actually went to comfort Subaru a bit. The way it was so in character for her just put him at ease. This helped him to compose his thoughts, and eventually led to his decision to try things solo. Normally, Subaru would have had no problem asking Beatrice for help, but because Amelia was a likely target, he couldn't risk having her be by herself. Ever since what had happened to Rem, Subaru was constantly fearful of- Oh, that's a good point. He is worried about leaving her by herself because he left Rem alone, and then, okay. Of a similar fate I like that. Amelia. He was so traumatized by that, that the fear of what could happen drowned out any thoughts of what should happen. He didn't ever think that way with Beatrice. Fear of what could happen drowned out thoughts of what should happen. Who's Rem? That's messed up, bro. Though, since regardless of what danger awaited them, Subaru knew his fate was intertwined with hers now. His sentiments towards her wouldn't ever stop him from fighting with her, since their relationship had crossed that line of resolve long ago. They yeah, were they're super close. Face everything together. Fast forward now to the confrontation in the tower, and this is where the biggest, biggest portion of content was cut. Not only did Subaru approach the whole thing completely different, but his end was a lot more disturbing than what we saw. 
So it, it was, was pretty Sulu fucking disturbing to me that he contemplated what happened in the last loop. He didn't know exactly how it was he died, but what he did know was that Sirius induced some type of mental corruption. He had essentially lost his. Oh wait, wait, which one was the the one that you saw about here? They were truly a tower, and this is where the biggest portion of content. Fast forward now to the confrontation in the tower, and this is where the biggest portion of content was cut. Mm, Not only okay, did okay. Subaru approach the whole thing completely different, but his end was a lot more disturbing than what we saw. So mm. it was as Subaru rushed there that he contemplated what happened in the last loop. He didn't know exactly how it was he died, but what he did know was that Sirius induced some type of mental corruption. He had essentially lost right, his so mind, and that made remembering loop. things a lot more difficult. Since the memories he retained after death were influenced by his state during the moment of death, that made assuming anything from the last loop very risky. That being the case, choosing how to approach this loop was going to be a lot harder. Like, he could cut- And he had no time to actually choose. No- nope. ...cause a commotion and scatter everyone away from the tower, but that would only end up delaying things. Sirius clearly didn't have a specific target in mind, so if her show didn't happen here, then Subaru knew it would just happen somewhere else. It was a hollow victory that didn't change anything. Not the type of win that Subaru would be satisfied with. So, Subaru would be a bit more proactive and scope out the tower, until finding that the door was open. Inside- Oh wow, he actually like, legit made a plan. Like he had a real, real plan. It was surprisingly empty since the magical nature of the clock meant that no mechanical pieces were necessary. It made it so the only things present were the support pillars and a massive staircase. It was oh, a wow. hollow tower in which only his footsteps echoed. Event oh, that's kind of creepy. Just a big empty tower? Eventually, Subaru had climbed to the point where he could hear Luzbel, but rather than him being by himself, Subaru could also hear the ramblings of the person who captured him. Right there with Luzbel was Sirius telling him just how proud she was of him. The tone sounded very reassuring. Oh, whoa, wow. So the, when we watched it in the anime, Subaru came across Luzbel on his own. That's it. There was no, there was no wrath around. Don't cry, don't wail, don't make a fuss. You truly are a good child, a strong child who's, who protected someone precious to you. But the actual words were more like a blessing and a curse. Oh, what the fuck? We'll always think of you with pride is kind of crazy. Hmm. Oh, well, it's the family that'll think of him with pride. Mm -mm -mm. It made it clear that the person speaking wasn't sane at all. It was yeah, from here crazy. that Subaru would have to approach quietly, putting to action the silent stepping lessons he was taught by Clint, Subaru's mentor and a steward serving Anna Rose. He's oh. the one who's been training Subaru, and in addition to teaching him oh. how to walk quietly, he's also the one who taught him how to use his whip. A weapon. Oh, wow. See, these are things that get cut, and then you're like, wait, what the fuck? Subaru was now proficient with, enough to be deemed somewhat decent. It's not like he was an expert, but he did possess a level of mastery that was considered acceptable. The whip itself was a bull whip, just like Indiana Jones's, except Subaru's was a bit longer, making it slightly more difficult to use. It was a custom gift from Clint, serving as a sort of graduation present, one that bore the name of the demon beast it was crafted from. As for why Subaru mm. chose the whip, well, as a weapon. But I don't even notice, man, Clint's existence. That's crazy. They, he has never been mentioned at all. Well suited for tricks and feints, it fit nicely with Subaru's own style of fighting. He knew he couldn't compete against swordsmen in a sword fight, but perhaps something like a whip could make things a bit more even. Ugh. So Damn. if there was any weapon that could match yeah, his ass cunning, looked. the whip was certainly one of the best candidates. It also gave him the ability to quickly land hits against opponents that were stronger than him. So as Subaru's strong whip too, Damn. slowly crept up behind Sirius, he first made sure he was within range to land an attack, then quickly wound his whip in a way that emphasized speed over force. He wasn't so strong that he could knock someone out instantly with it, but if he could at least restrain his target before they noticed, then that on its own was a significant advantage for him. He was hoping to grab hold of Sirius, then toss her over the banister. It was before the whip could even wrap itself around Sirius's neck, though, that Sirius would already be asking Subaru why he was so angry. She had Ooh, she like sensed Hadn't his ass? turned around, yet somehow she knew that Subaru was in the middle of attacking her. 
That's when she would deflect the whip with her own chains, entangling the two Damn. together, making both of them useless. Fortunately, this worked in Subaru's favor, since all he had to do now was tug to force her off balance. It was just enough to make her stumble and give Subaru the opportunity to tackle her. A powerful oh. charge that would send her over the banister anyway. That's when Subaru would finally start to save the spell, leading to the events that we oh. saw If you're wondering how Sirius was able to find her way back up, well, somehow she'd managed to fling her chain, pull Subaru down, then use the resulting force to propel herself back up. She'd essentially hit Subaru with the Uno reverse card and left him for Oof. death by what was essentially a barbed hanging. This oh. wasn't what made this death so grisly, though, since in the midst of Sirius revealing her power, Subaru was descending into a form of madness completely different from the first one. With his and Luzbel's fear bouncing back and forth stacking on top of each other, the cascading effect it had on Subaru's mind made him lose his very sense of self. For him, Ooh. everything in this moment was- Oh, yeah, that's so true because you're- Imagine feeling the fear or the whatever that anyone else fears. That would definitely cause you to lose your sense of self because you're feeling the emotions that someone else is feeling. Those aren't your feelings. Those are someone else's feelings. Was now fear. From Sirius's voice to the air itself, absolutely everything, no matter how minute, terrified Subaru down to his very core. Like, he wanted to close his eyes. Damn. I didn't see no more, but even the dark wanted to scare him too. It was after that that the thought of never seeing light again scared him, then it was this thought process that kept spiraling out of control. It went on and on until fear in its purest form became the only thing that Subaru could comprehend anymore. Well, fuck. To him, fear was the only truth now. So, in the end, Subaru didn't know whether he died from hanging or terror-induced cardiac arrest, but what he did know was that he never wanted to feel that way again. I don't blame he him. lost everything that made him who he was made him realize that maybe he should ask for help. Luckily, that experience wasn't all for naught, since Subaru now understood a bit of Sirius's resonance ability. He figured okay. it was an authority that let her manipulate people's emotions. He wasn't quite sure how it worked, but the fact it affected him went to show that he wasn't immune to authorities like how he hoped he was. Ever yeah. since he was able to resist the authority of Sloth, Subaru hoped his connection to the witches would allow him to resist all the other Archbishop's authorities. Sirius had unfortunately proved this otherwise, but that in Oof. itself was valuable information too. Oh yeah, now that now Although that he knows he's not immune to authorities, when uh, he is uh, challenging another Saint Archbishop and he's dealing with whatever authority they have, he knows that he's not immune to it. Was activated. The current circumstances made for quite the interesting predicament. What I mean is that while yes, Subaru could defeat Sirius by blowing up the entire tower. To do so would mean sacrificing Luzbel. To some, this could be seen as a necessary sacrifice, but to Subaru, that was an outcome that he would never accept. Reason being that it went against everything he now currently stood for. Ever not since letting people he made die. Up his mind to not sacrifice himself, Subaru believed he had no right to force others to either. So yep. if saving one life meant saving many, to Subaru, losing that one life was like giving up on the world. He pretty much possessed the exact opposite view of Kuritsugu. That being the case, overall this was a very tough situation. It wasn't quite enough to induce that level of despair yet though, since if he couldn't pull this off then Subaru knew he would question his value as Amelia's knight. It was a train of thought that led directly to Reinhardt. Dying twice made him forget that he was even an option, but after racking his mind hard, the obvious answer became clear. Bringing us now to Subaru's third encounter in the square. It was Subaru's concern here that had actually gone to confuse This is the Reinhardt one. I didn't think, or at least I wasn't aware, that there was in fact a penalty just for sharing information gained via return by death. Personally, I thought it was just about return by death itself, but Subaru was very anxious about revealing information he'd learned from return by death. It's something I swear we've seen him do numerous times before. In any case... It turns out that despite Subaru not having died in over a year, there were numerous times throughout where, when discussing Return by Death, the penalty for doing so would thoroughly torment him. There was this one instance where he tried to reveal it to Beatrice, only to experience hell-like pain for quite a few moments after. 
It didn't mm. make him any less willing to share everything with Beatrice, though, so as long as there wasn't any true consequential suffering, Subaru was still committed to sharing everything with her. This did actually help to teach Subaru something, and that was that the Sub As long as he doesn't, like, say how he got the information, or, like, imply it, or, you know, it's really just the return by death aspect of things that he can't go into detail, I think. And then I think there might be some other specific things that he learns that he likely can't talk about either. Like, if he learns some crazy shit about, like, the witches, because he talked with the witches, I feel like that's maybe something that's not going to fly with, you know, spreading that information. Because I, I feel like the things he can share are things that I don't even know how to describe what I'm trying to say. But, like, the witches thing is, like, people aren't going to be able to find that out. That's, like, a very... It's like a more secret thing, if that makes sense. I feel like something like that would be harder for him to explain. He might get the, 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 that, that sensation of his heart being gripped by Satala if, um, if he tried to share that. But also, I could be wrong. Verity of the penalty I don't know. differed, depending on the level of detail being shared about Return by Death, along with who exactly it was he was telling it Oh, wait. To... Oh, who he's selling it to, not necessarily who he's talking about. The level okay. of suffering would change accordingly. So the level of These detail the factors in which is... the penalty was directly Okay, so who to. and what? So sharing information with So who are you like... sharing it with and what level of detail are you going into? Ratchins wouldn't be as severe as sharing it with someone like Amelia. It was an interesting connection Subaru constantly Oh, has to so if you kind of share it with less important people or less relevant people to what the information is then it's a, a a weaker penalty than sharing it with like obviously somebody that is constantly referred to as the witch of envy right one that signified to the degree of what subaru could share depended solely on the whims of the witch luckily subaru could share quite a bit with rachin so in addition to what he said in the anime Subaru also explained who was going to attack and when it was going to happen. Oh, oh, wow. He had essentially. He's OK, so to properly explain, it's the witch cult bishop of wrath who's coming. She's going to poke her face out at the top of the time. There's no particular target. So she's going to aim for everyone. Okay, give wow. full context on everything. Damn. Sirius's entrance. After he said everything pretty much the same, except for an additional line indicating a potential mind reading ability. I don't know if that's actually what it was, but somehow she knew that someone was thinking about her with more intensity than expected. A clear mm. indicator that perhaps- Probably like an emotional thing, right? She's very like emotionally connected. It's not just emotions that she can share. It was when Reinhardt showed up shortly after that mm. he immediately deduced how it was Sirius's authority actually worked. Unlike how Subaru thought it was by looking her way or hearing her voice, it was instead through the mere fact of knowing that she existed. Anyone who acknowledged her in any way whatsoever was fair game to become a What? Just knowing of her existence? But you gotta shamak her ass as well! We need to get Betty, like, um, leveled up to the point where she can shamak everyone. Like, mana potions type shit. Shamak works only before you know about- No, I'm saying, well, they know about her, right? They're aware. Depending on how he shares the information with Betty, maybe people aren't made aware of, you know, maybe Betty doesn't become aware and then, you know what I mean? I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I feel like if they use it to keep everyone else from being aware of her, Subaru will still be affected, sure. But that's it. What? It, okay, if Subaru is the only one affected, what emotions are bouncing? It'll just be him and, um, and Luzbel. If she dies, he dies. Wait, no, no, no. What if they just shamic her into another fucking dimension like they did with the um the rabbits? She has Tina. Wait, she doesn't have Tina. She has Loose Bell. Don't have mana. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's that's exactly what I'm saying, though, uh, Blade. I'm saying we need a way to get Betty the mana so that way she could run that shit all the time. Now, I understand that that is completely impossible. That shit ain't gonna happen, but we need it to. You know what I mean? She can't use Shamuk. The authority affects the soul, not the senses. Hear me out. If you take care of her existence, 
then the people won't be able to even know that she exists. If you take care of her existence with Shamak, then the the people that are in the square won't be able to know she exists, right? Is that a stupid thing to say? I feel like it makes sense. Just don't have a soul. Easy solution. Soul washing? Am I the only one that thinks Shamak is something that blocks everyone's senses in the range? Yeah, but they have he just said they have to be aware of her existence in order for her power to work. So if you just make it so that way they don't they're not aware, then right? I don't know. It was a crazy power that even Reinhardt was wary of. I'm sure this was him just being humble, but the thought of even him not being immune really worried Subaru. Sirius would then talk to Reinhardt a little bit more, basically saying how he was the ideal manifestation of everything she preached about. The way the masses Damn. came together to love him specifically really resonated with the love that Sirius liked to talk about all day. This conversation didn't really last much longer, though, as Reinhardt would quickly engage in what can only be described as aerial combat. I know to us that doesn't aerial seem combat. very ridiculous, but to Subaru, Reinhardt's power was just becoming absurd now. The way he handled Sirius's that man's chains broken was as hell. pretty crazy, too, since with only his foot, he was able to gain complete control over them. It was a feat that made Subaru think Reinhardt was a literal superhero now. The rest kind of, of. The fight was pretty much the same. That's, that's fairly the accurate. Spell bearing the first signs that injury was shared with Sirius too. Although Subaru didn't understand at the time, when saving Loose Spell, there were bruises on his arm that weren't there before. Injuries that are later hinted as one Sirius received during her fight with Reinhard. Oh. Sirius also didn't just accept her fate either, and instead actually tried to flee by propelling herself away with her chains. Reinhardt, of course, caught her instantly, then chopped her in half along with everyone else. It was the first time that Subaru had ever died so cleanly. A demise so quick that rather than pain, the only thing Subaru could feel after was surprise. Oh, damn! Did, however, provide the information he needed to understand how he died in the first loop, so now he knew Sirius's power wasn't just a resonance of emotions, but also a transference of physical conditions, too. Oh it was God. enough of a problem to get Subaru to seek out more help. It was in this scene that I was hoping to find more information on Reinhardt's power, but what we saw was pretty much all we got. His dominion over mana made everyone else's non-existent. Sure, this was definitely OP, but at the same time it was also very much inconvenient. It made it so none of Subaru's allies could stand on the same field together. Individually, they were all very much formidable, but together, well, there was no plan Subaru could come up with which would let them all reach their true potential. Now, after there was this whole conversation about how Sirius' authority was similar to the high-level spell Nekt, leading to the basis behind oh. why Shamak should work against it. Ah. Since that whole Nekt, leading to the basis behind why Shamak should work against it. Since that whole theory was immediately disproved, though, I oh, okay, never mind, I'll shut up. <laughs> it was immediately disproved. Okay, I, I, you know what, guys? I think you were what? I think you guys were right. I think you guys were right. Good job, chat. Good job. Why the anime decided to cut it. Sirius's authority was more a curse that manipulated the soul itself, not some heretical abuse of a spell that let you share senses. That's why Shamak wouldn't work against it. This brings us then to Emil. But I thought she, it, he literally said, like, you had to know of her existence. Hey, you were supposed to just, without your senses, recognize someone's existence with your soul? Leah, whose astute observation highlighted Subaru's emotions right now. The reason she could tell that Subaru was about to cry was because deep down, Subaru was terrified. He'd just died three times in an hour, which was far more death than he was used to. That's yeah, especially in such a time frame, dude. One hour, three times died? Damn. To say that he would ever get used to dying, but to do so so often was far more than what he'd handled before. His future was constantly being robbed from him in a way that was unacceptable. He his normally gets so much more his vow completely time. This is what it meant every time he died, so to have his existence trampled like that didn't really sit well with him. Fast forward to the actual fight now, and Sirius didn't come out unscathed by Amelia's attack. Half her bandages were soaked in blood, her left oh. arm dangled as if broken, and her demeanor oh. clearly unsteady and battered. What shocked Subaru more than that, though, was the way that Sirius just completely ignored him. 
she didn't even register that he was there, but instead focused solely on Amelia and Beatrice. The fight itself Damn. showcased That's Amelia's rude. brand new style of combat, which Superu himself dubbed as Ice Brand Arts. It was a way of fighting that took full advantage of her massive mana capacity, one that constantly reformed her weapons, allowing her to launch high-speed combo attacks. She would go in fully intending to break her weapons of ice, then immediately reshape them into something new. To Subaru, it was a beautiful display that made him feel like he was watching a fairy dance. To others, this was more a dance of ice and fire. It was in the meantime that Subaru was dealing with Sirius' soul-washed minions, tossing who he could into the waterway, then literally parkouring his way up to Luzbel. It was oh. yet another one of the skills that Clint had taught him, and Subaru was making sure to make good use of it. We did see him going through the obstacle course, so we are aware that he has that ability to maneuver fairly well. It's a bit here. Now, there is a bit more to Amelia's fight, but that's actually something that I'm going to save for next week, since I'm not sure if they'll include it in the next episode or not. So, for now, that's everything about Season 3, Episode 2, and pretty much all that I gotta say for it. If you liked the video, then leave a like, and if you want to see more, then consider subscribing. Alright! That was a good video! I think that broke down everything in Episode 2 really well. Listen, if you need a breakdown on, uh, on, on ReZero, or basically Isekai in general, not just ReZero, any news does great jobs, uh, does a great job with, with, with breaking that stuff down. Introducing the skipped content, the cut content, so that way you can get a better idea of, 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 uh, the, 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 the anime, whatever anime it is. You know, if, if it's ReZero, if it's, um, I see there's a skipped content for Don Machi, Overlord, you know, whatever the anime is that, that you, um, want that additional info on. Check out more any news videos, all right? If you enjoyed this one, like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, make sure you all keep it fresh. Peace.